This chapter's title is Red Riot, and honestly, I can't think of a better one. Also, if you don't ship Kirishima and Mina after this, what are you doing? What's up guys, it's Truth Hero, and it's another beautiful day with another beautiful My Hero Academia chapter review. So, Boku no Hero Academia chapter 280 of the manga. We're getting up there, we're getting close to 300. We'll discuss everything from Mina Ashido and her new super move to Red Riot Unbreakable and Kirishima certainly earning his redemption versus Gigantamachia. But also the ending of this chapter where Endeavor confronts Shigaraki and Shigaraki says something very interesting. Heroes always hurt their family. What could this mean for Endeavor? Let's dive in. The chapter actually opens with a fire that's spreading through the forest rapidly. I really didn't know that Dobby's attack did this much damage, but as we see, it's clearly an intense blaze. Reiko Yanagi, on the other hand, is making sure that Denki is okay, which he's clearly not. Don't worry, Reiko, it's not your fault that Denki got hit with debris. We're talking about fighting the League of Villains here. Saro, on the other hand, is wondering, geez, I got thrown into the fire when I was blown away. How many other people are still in this fire? It just occurred to me that perhaps the fire is spreading so rapidly because Gigantamachia blew people away and this fanned some minor flames from Dobby's attacks. Gosh, why is every time they fight Dobby, it's always in a forest, it's always in a bad environment? But can we talk about Mina Ashido's acid man? No fire's getting through that liquid armor. This is actually a really good super move for her because any close range fighter or villain even ones that use maybe projectiles that aren't that fast, even Dobby's flames, they can't reach her. I mean, if you tried to touch her, you'd have to burn your hands on acid. So when she assumes this stance, she's pretty indestructible. I'm someone who can do this. Yes, you can, Mina. I believe in you. You can do this. While Mina approaches Gigantamachia, she thinks having resolve and having a mind that's not filled with any fear but she also thinks about the fact that Midnight might not be alive. Gigantamachia turns to Mountain Lady who is still trying desperately to hold his mouth open and says, I could just shake you off once again. Everything is for my owner or my master, Shigaraki. This is really cool because it's a battle of resolve. Who wants it more? Will the heroes end up subduing Gigantamachia or will he triumph? Also, he's not just some dumb giant. He knows the heroes have a plan and what they're trying to do. I don't understand why he can't just, you know, close his mouth or cover his mouth and then still have one hand to knock out some heroes or kick them. I don't know, maybe he is a dumb giant. But he knows that he has far more power than the heroes give him credit for, and he's about to show that off. As Mina Ashido hears that voice again, she is fearful. She thinks back to how scared she was when she saved those two girls and lied to this behemoth. She loses her grip on the anesthesia bottle, and as Machia shakes off Mountain Lady, his hand starts to come down on a terrified Mina Ashido. Just when you thought it was over for Alien Queen, who shows up and shoves her to safety? Red Riot Unbreakable, Ejiro Kirishima. Besides Deku versus Shigaraki, this is perhaps the best parallel between two characters in all of My Hero Academia. Kirishima was once a scared middle school student who didn't have enough courage to stand up to Makia, and Mina Ashido with her charisma was the one to be the hero that day. Now he gets to be the one to return the favor and save Mina. He told her that when he started high school, he was no longer going to be someone who ran away or cowered in fear. He dyed his hair red and created a new persona. And I think today, his transformation into a man who never backs down is complete. Kirishima, congratulations. You've redeemed yourself against Gigantamachia. Also, we always wanted to know who was stronger between the two of you because you kind of look alike. And I gotta say, in terms of spirit, it's you. Let me know down below in the comments. What do you guys think of Kirishima here? Has he proven himself? Has he redeemed himself for that day? Or does he still have a chip left on his shoulder? Personally, I think he's gone beyond. He's done plus ultra, and he has nothing more to prove. He can just focus on being him and being a hero. But let me know your thoughts. What's the next step for Red Riot Unbreakable? 
Also, as we're about to see, Kirishima has some insane reflexes, so let's talk more about Hard Boys, Tetsu Tetsu, and Red Riot. Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima are running through this fire. See, Sero, there's really nothing to worry about. Tetsu Tetsu says, It'll be hot. We won't burn, but it's gonna be hot. I really like this because it's kind of a nod to when Tetsu Tetsu fought Shoto during the Class 1A B training arc, and he put his steel to the test. He forged himself in those fires, and now, for someone like Dobby's Flames, he's ready to take on a forest fire. I mean, what is a forest fire compared to Shoto? Speaking of someone who went through something and came out the other side strong, Kirishima's currently climbing Gigantamachia, so whatever Gigantamachia tried to do by crushing him clearly didn't work. Also, I'm not sure if this is important given the end of this chapter, but make a note that Kirishima, with his hardened fingers, actually pierces Gigantamachia's skin. He can pierce this beast's hide, and we know that Yayorozu said a needle couldn't do that, so I'd say that's pretty strong. But just as Kirishima is about to throw his bottle of anesthesia into Makia's face, Togo throws a knife and breaks it. Talk about a heads up play by Toga. But bruh, Kirishima came prepared with two anesthesia bottles since he recovered Mina's from when he saved her from Giganta Makia. Just think about this for a second. He has the awareness to rush in, swoop in, grab her, push her out of the way to save her, and catch her glass anesthesia bottle then somehow put it in his pants or uniform pocket, then harden to survive Gigantamachia's hit while protecting that bottle and his other one which failed when he threw it with Toga's knife. I mean, can we just say MVP? Can we call it now? He's the MVP of this fight. I don't know how he did that. Notice that clink sound when Toga's knife broke Kirishima's bottle? Well, that sound happened again in Gigantamachia's mouth. Sleep well, giant. Sleep well. Before we continue, I just gotta say, the amount of flawless teamwork between Class 1A and Class 1B, who we actually don't know how much time they spend with each other. Yes, they had a joint training arc, but they were fighting each other and some were on the same teams. But first, Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima braving the flames, and now Tokage pulling Kirishima off Gigantamachia's shoulder before he can squish him. I mean, this is amazing, and it it's really encouraging because when they grow up and finally graduate and become pro heroes, I think they'll be able to cooperate with anyone, random heroes, and they'll be able to take on any villain. It's pretty cool. Yayu Rosa and crew confirm that Kirishima did deliver the anesthetic. Momo says, Kirishima got it in. <laughs> well, he's about to with Mina. <laughs> Momo also says that now that it's delivered, the more he moves around, the faster it will spread. So Gigantamachia will be sleeping soon. Also, Yamamo and others fired cannons at him and broke Gigantamachia's jaw. I mean, they did more damage than villains. They did more damage than Shigaraki did to Machia. So, that's impressive. Some pro heroes show up to back up our student interns, and I'm wondering, who are the real pros here? But now that they're here, Gigantamaki is just like, ugh, these flies just keep on coming. And I'm getting the sense that he's getting tired. I mean, he will be sleeping soon if that anesthetic works, but just that also his conviction is draining. He's losing his spirit and his will to fight all these people just to get to Shigaraki. Now, the end of this chapter may seem like a minor victory and an ending to this arc, but I have a feeling deep down that the heroes have not won. At least not yet. I think this is setting up something even grander. We have Endeavor confronting Shigaraki about his mindless destruction, and he says, We heroes would never surrender to someone like you who lacks conviction. What Shigaraki responds with is so next level. You heroes end up hurting your own families just to help others. Those were my father's words, at least. So, if that's conviction, then I certainly have it. Obviously, this hits different if you're someone like Endeavor, who hurt his own family in pursuit of being a hero. He physically hurt Shoto and mentally abused basically everyone else in his family. Some of the other villains in the League, and maybe Gigantamachia, might have given up. But right here, Shigaraki's conviction is crystal clear. 
What I think might happen here in the second half of this battle between Shigaraki and the heroes is that Endeavor will have to confront what he did to his family in his pursuits of being a hero. So he'll have to confront Shoto, but maybe he'll even square off against Toyo Todoroki, aka Dobby. The only thing is, I don't know how Dobby's gonna get here now that Gigantamaki looks like he's going down and he's on the other side of town in the forest. But maybe this could hint that Gigantamaki is not going down, or maybe Dobby escapes and runs here. I don't know why he would run here, because he's pretty frail. But, I mean, we know that Endeavor is going to have to confront that at some point, and maybe Shigaraki can hold that over his head as some type of manipulation as he's fighting Endeavor. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. What do you think about Kirishima's redemption? Will Endeavor have to confront Toyo Todoroki in front of Shigaraki and all these heroes? And I know that Gigantamaki looks like he's about to take a nap, but was this truly a victory for the heroes? I'm still uneasy about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys like My Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today by subscribing. And until next time, Plus Ultra. Thank <laughs> you.